Hello everyone and welcome to this video on creating a sniper scope effect. Here's what we'll be creating today. It's a really cool effect and it can look pretty complicated, but in this video we'll be breaking it down into small tasks that when combined will produce pretty good results. Oh, and the heater here broke, so that's the reason for this silly thing. Let's just go ahead and get started. So here's the scene we're going to be working with today. You're of course going to need some weapons. I'm going to be using the L96 sniper rifle that you see here. It's part of the modern weapons bundle, which also includes this shotgun and these rifles and this pistol, and we'll be adding adding to it as we go. It's created by a guy called Matthias. If you want to download the weapons for yourself, you can simply go to devassets.com and you can select the modern weapons pack. Choose a price that you want. You can even grab it for free if you're just unable to support. Then simply hit pay what you want and it's going to download as a zip file with a Unity package that will set everything up for you. So now that we have our weapons in here, we are pretty much ready to get started. And you can see here, if I zoom out, that I have a rigid body FPS controller in my scene. You can pretty much use any kind of controller that you have. I just grabbed this from the standard asset. So if you want to get the same one, you simply right click, go import package and then characters. And it's part of the characters folder here under the standard assets folder under first person character. And I simply grab the FPS controller here. So that should set everything up and that just means that if we now hit play inside of Unity and remember to put a collider on your ground plane as well, we are able to move around the scene and jump and look around and stuff like that. So nothing fancy but just helps us set up a very basic first person controller. So now to actually get this gun mounted on our controller, we need to kind of drag it under the main camera. So let's just go ahead and duplicate the sniper rifle and let's drag it under the main camera and let's reset the transform on this. So you can see currently that it's really offset compared to the camera. It's actually inside the camera and that's not really desired. So to fix this, let's go ahead and create an empty game object under the main camera, which we'll call a weapon holder. And we'll basically just parent all our guns to this weapon holder object. It will simply allow us to line up all our guns at once so that we can easily switch out guns if that's part of your game. So now let's take our sniper rifle and parent that to the weapon holder. And now we can position everything using this empty game object. So first of all, we need to have a look at where our first person controller is pointing. So it's pointing in this direction. And so I can see that we need to at least flip this 90 degrees on the Y and now it points in the right direction here, but we also need to kind of um, move it over to the right a little bit, adjust the X movement here and definitely also move it forward a bit. And from here we can pretty much fine tune all of our values in the inspector. So we'll just uh, drag it down a bit on the Y, we'll drag it over a bit more on the X. And what I really recommend that you do here is bump up the clipping plane. So if we select our main camera, you can see that our uh, gun is currently being cut off when it gets too close to the camera. The reason for this is that we currently have a minimum of 0 0.3 units from the camera before we start drawing any models. And we can simply reduce this by changing this value to something smaller, say 0 0.02, and you can see that it's now rendering the entire weapon. So what we can do now is go back to our weapon holder and readjust this. So probably wanna move it over a tad more, maybe down even more, something like that. Looks pretty decent. And you should of course spend way more time fine tuning this stuff than I do. I just wanted to get this working quite uh, fast and easy uh, for the tutorial. So let's just say that we are now uh, really satisfied with our weapon placement. We can go ahead and rename this one to our sniper rifle just to keep things very simple and we have our weapon holder and our main camera. So the next thing that we want to do is animate our weapon holder. We want to have two animations, one for when we are not scoped in, so when our weapon is idle, and one for when we are indeed scoped in. So let's select our weapon holder, let's go to our animation tab. If this is not open you can go to window animation or press ctrl 6 and let's hit create. And this is going to allow us to create a new animation. And I like to keep all of my animation data within one folder. So let's do new folder and let's call this one animation. We can double click on that and then we can uh, name our animation accordingly. I'm going to rename this to idle. 
And uh, you can see that it's now created an idle animation along with a weapon holder controller. And this is what is going to mix together different animations in order uh, to transition from one, one animation to another and define parameters such as should the animation loop and what should happen. So this is basically controlling the animations and this is the individual animation. So let's first create some parameters for our idle animation. You can see currently we have no properties in here so nothing will really happen. What I think we should do is go and select our weapon holder if you haven't already. Make sure you're in record mode and you can see that our play buttons are also now red to signify that we are in record mode. I think we should simply animate our va Y value a tiny tiny bit up and down kind of like we're breathing. So let's start at a va Y value of minus 0 0.12. And then we can move forward, let's say two seconds, and I'm just scrolling here. And we can maybe animate this um, downwards by simply adding a two onto that. And then we can just scroll out even further and we can copy the first uh, keyframes over to the four second mark. So if we just play this back, you can see that we have a very subtle movement on the gun. I kind of like that. And we can just smooth this out even more by selecting all of the keyframes, right clicking and selecting flat. And that's going to make sure that if we have a look at our curves here, and we of course need to only look at the Y position and hit F here, you can see that it is curving a tiny, tiny bit, but the values here are so small that it's not going to be super noticeable. Cool, so that's our idle animation. Now we can sh uh, shift back to the dope sheet and we can create a new clip. And this is of course going to be our scoped in animation. And here I just wanna call this something like uh, scoped. And we can save that. And uh, again, we wanna select our weapon holder. And here I want to reset the X value. I want that to be zero so that our gun is totally centered. I also want to move up on the Y and you can see that it's moving very quickly. So it's hard for me to fine tune. But if I just hold down Alt, it's going to allow me to uh, do or adjust this value in much smaller increments. So something like negative 0.1 looks pretty good. And then we can move in the Z a, a little bit as well to get the gun really close to our camera, something like that. And you will notice that I've just put this keyframe at the very beginning of the animation. I didn't do any kind of transition. You may, you may think that we should really start here and then as the animation went on, we should transition to on this position, but instead I've just put it at the start. And the reason for this is that we can actually have Mechanim, the Unity animation system, automatically transition between this and this position for us, so we don't need to actually keyframe that in, and I'm going to show you that in a second. So now that we have these two animations, what we can go ahead and do is actually open up our weapon holders. So this is again the animation controller, what controls what uh, animation we're currently playing. So let's just double click that, and it's going to open it up in the animator. And our animator is basically the editor for the animation controller. So again, we, we differentiate between our animation down here, where we create animation clips, and the animator where we transition between animation clips. Cool. So, and again, if the animator isn't open, you go to window and you select animator and you're good to go. So you can see here, it's selected idle as the default clip. That's why it's orange. And we also have a, uh, an arrow pointing from the entry, which means our the beginning of our game over to the idle animation. If it's not already, you can always right click and set, uh, hit set as the layer default state and it's going to change that. Now we need to create a transition from our idle to our scoped. So let's right click, make transition over to the scoped. But we don't want this to happen as soon as we start the game. Right now, if we start the game, it's going to play the idle and then go straight to the scoped. We instead want this to happen when a certain condition is met. And that is whenever we choose to scope in using some kind of player input. To do this, we create what is called a parameter. You can see up here we have two tabs, the layers and the parameters. Make sure you're on the parameter and then hit the plus sign. And we're going to select Boolean. And the Boolean here is something like is scoped or just scoped for short. And this is going to control whether or not we are currently scoped in. So you can see that I can switch this to default to true or to false. We of course want this to be defaulted to false so that when we start our game, we're not going to start scoped in. 
Then on this transition, we're now able to add a condition. We simply hit the plus sign here and it will automatically add the scoped parameter and say that we only want this to happen when scoped is true. And we can do the same thing when transitioning back. So we make a transition from the scoped to the idle animation. We select the backwards transition and we add a new condition here that we only want to do this when scoped is now false. So that is how we transition between animations. However, there will be a problem with this. And that is we are actually going to wait for idle to finish before we transition to the new animation. That's what's called exit time. And if we go in and click on this transition here, you can see that's currently enabled. What we want to do is disable exit time and then instead go in here and say that we want this to have a fixed duration where the transition duration is 0.15. I find that to be a pretty good value and that basically means how quickly we are going to scope in. We of course want to do this as well when we are transitioning back to the idle animation. So here let's select our backwards transition and remove exit time and it's also set the transition duration to 0.15 and you can have different transition durations if you want to scope in quicker than you uh, scope out you can simply change the transition duration uh, on the individual transitions but I want them to have a uniform length. So to preview what we just made we can take our animator and dock it over here by the inspector so that we can see our game view. We can also just scroll over here to see our different transitions. By the way to move around the animator I use the middle mouse button or you could also use alt and then left click. And basically what we'll do here is select our weapon holder and when we now hit play we should see the different animations playing. You can see currently that the idol is playing and how far it is in its animation cycle. If we now hit escape, our mouse should appear and don't mind the fact that um, the view here is still following our mouse movement, it's not gonna matter. What we can do now is go up here and we can see what happens when scoped is set to true. So if we click that, it's going to, ins uh, going to transition over to our scoped animation and when I then click it again it's going to transition back and you can see how much it smooths this out and that is all done by mechanism itself we didn't have to do that at all. So now we're ready to control these animations through script and to do this I'm just going to select the weapon holder object but you can pretty much place it anywhere. You can even add all of this logic to an already existing script. Say you have a script called sniper rifle, you can just add the scoping mechanic to that. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to be creating a separate script. Let's hit add component and let's call the script something like scope. Let's hit new script, create an add, and let's just double click this to open it up in Visual Studio. So let's begin by creating a reference to our animator. Let's remove these two functions and instead create a public animator and we'll also call it animator with a non capital A. What we want to do is access this animator whenever we want to scope in and out and change the value of our scope parameter that we just created. So to do this let's get some input from the player and remember we check for input inside of the update method. So let's write void update and inside of the update method we write if input dot get button down and this will return true whenever the button that we now specify is clicked and the button that we want to check for is fire 2 and fire 2 is the right mouse button what you normally use to scope in you can of course write something else here um, but I'm just going to be using that so inside of this if statement we can now change some values on the animator to do this we go animator dot set bool and we then specify the name of our boolean parameter that was scoped and remember this needs to be exact because it's not going to throw an error if it's not. So just to make sure that we're using the same name here we'll go inside of our animator inside of unity and just copy the name here and paste it in. It's very important that you get that right. Then comma and we then input whether or not we want to set it to true or false. But in our case that varies on what it's currently set to. We just want to flip it so if it's currently true and we're scoped in we want to scope out and the other way around if we're not scoped in and it's set to false we want to set to true in order to scope in. So to do that let's keep track of whether or not we're currently scoped in. Uh, the easiest way of doing this is just creating a private boolean called isScoped and we default that to false. 
You could also just get the value from this bool, uh, but I think it's better to keep track of this in a separate private variable on the script. So basically what we do here is just input whether or not we are currently scoped. There we go. So if we are scoped, we set that to true. And if not, we set it to false. But we also need to flip the value of is scoped. To do that, before we access the animator, we go is scoped equals the opposite of what is scoped currently is. So again, this means that we'll get the opposite. So if it's false, this will return true. And if it's true, it will return false. You get it. The cool thing about this piece of code is that it's so ridiculously small, yet we can animate pretty much anything inside the game. And it should actually already be working. So if we go to our weapon holder now, let's go back to the inspector. We just need to drag in the animator and we're pretty much hit ready to hit play. So now when I right click, we scope in and when I right click again, we scope out. The next thing we want to do is overlay some kind of UI that resembles a scope. And I've provided this inside of the Modern Weapons Pack as well. So if you double click that after downloading it and access the extra folder, you can see in here we have a scope overlay PNG. And we simply drag this inside of Unity. You can use any image. I'm just going to be using this one. We want to uh, click on it and change the texture type to Sprite 2D and UI. And we also probably want to bump up the max size to uh, 4K. So let's just hit apply on all that. And it's going to very quickly apply it. And you can see that it now is transparent uh, within this scope here. So let's right click in the hierarchy, go UI and then image. And it's going to create a new canvas for us along with a 2D image. Let's go to the scene, hit F to focus on it and switch to 2D mode. And we can go ahead and change the source image here. We want to change that to the scope overlay we just imported. We also want to hit set native size to scale this up to match its correct proportions. And finally, you can see in the game that it already looks pretty good. But if we maximize the game view here, and I'm doing that by shortcut by simply hitting shift space, it doesn't really scale up with the screen. So let's go into our canvas and change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size. Let's slide this all the way over to height so that each time our window gets taller, it's going to scale with it. Awesome, so that looks a lot better and I'm actually really satisfied with that. Now let's rename our image to scope overlay. So let's now control this through a script. So let's disable it inside of the inspector and let's head into Visual Studio and we can create a reference to the object. So let's go public game object to create a reference. Let's call it something like scope overlay. And then we can simply go to the update method here and type scope overlay, whoops, scope overlay dot set active and input the is scoped variable. However, this is going to propose a problem because if we now go into Unity and we remember to hook up the scope overlay here, so drag that in there, you will notice that when we play, it's going to um, enable the image as soon as we start scoping. And we actually want some delay on that because we only want it to appear when we are fully scoped in and the animation is done. So we want to add a bit of delay to this. The way to do that is by creating a separate function that will control um, our scope. So we'll create a void on scoped and we'll also create another void called on unscoped. And then we simply go down here and we say, if um, is scoped, we want to call on scoped, else we want to call on unscoped. Awesome. But of course we want to delay this a little bit. And inside of a normal function in C Sharp, we're not able to wait a certain amount of seconds. To do that, we need to convert this into a coroutine by instead of typing void, we type I enumerator. And now when we're calling it, we don't want to say on scope. We want to say start coroutine and then on scoped. There we go. So we just need to wrap that in a separate function call. And then down here, we can now say yield return new wait for seconds. And again, if you've never seen a coroutine, the syntax here is going to be so super weird, but just type after me and know that whatever you put in here is the amount of seconds that it's going to wait before calling the rest of the code. So in here we'll put 0.15, the same number as we did for the transition duration. Then afterwards here, we can set our scope overlay, oops, scope overlay, we can say dot set active to true. And up here we can say scope overlay dot set active false. 
Awesome, so that should actually work and now we should have delay so that our uh, transition will finish before showing the scope and indeed it does and you can see just how much cooler that is. Next up we of course want to disable the weapon when we are scoped in because right now it's really getting in the way and we also probably want to increase our field of view so that we will get the impression that we are actually zooming in and the scope is actually doing something. So to do that we simply add a few rep references inside of Visual Studio here we need a reference to our gun and we could just disable it but one thing that is way more normal to do is have a separate camera rendering the weapon and then have one camera rendering everything else. What this will also help you do is solve problems where your weapon is clipping through other objects. If I were to go in here now into the scene, go out of the 2D mode here and focus on our rigid body FPS controller, if I then go in here create a 3D object cube and place it in front of the uh, controller here, if we then hit play and walk into this cube, you can see that our gun is clipping through. So to solve this and also easily make us able to disable the graphics of our weapon without removing it from the scene, we simply go ahead and create a separate camera. To do this, we right click and go um, camera. And I'm going to parent this to the normal camera so that it will follow everything that our normal camera does and make sure you reset the transform so that we don't have any kind of weird offset. And what we'll do here is now add a layer separately for the weapons. You can see I've actually already done this. To uh, do the same on your system, all you need to do is select the weapon holder, go layer, add layer, and you go ahead and type in weapons on the first one here. Then you go back to the weapon holder and you change the layer to weapons. And we want to do that on the children as well so that our sniper rifle will also have the weapons layer assigned. Now inside of our camera, and this is going to be our weapon camera, we go and select culling mask here and we select nothing except for weapons. So we only want this to draw the weapons and you can see that down here. And we want to set the um, clear flags to depth only so you can see it doesn't render anything like skybox or the color it only renders our gun and we want to set the depth here to one to make sure that it's on top of our other camera and again we want to adjust the near plane to 0 0.01 then we select our main camera and in here we remove now the weapon so under culling mask we disable the weapons and you can see now it doesn't draw that and we can actually set the near flags up again here so we can set them to something like 0.1 a bit higher and now we should see inside the game that it's overlaid the weapon, weapon camera on top of the main camera and if we disable the weapon camera weapons are not going to be drawn so now we can go inside of visual studio we can add a reference to the weapon camera so we just go public game object weapon camera and then down here we go weapon camera dot set active to true when we're not scoped in and we want to set it to false when we are scoped in. So now we should see that if we hit play here, oops, we also need to reference this of course and we also need to remove the audio listener, the GUI layer and the flare layer on the camera here. If we select our weapon holder, we can now drag in our weapon camera and now we should see that if we right click and scope in, that our weapon indeed disappears when our overlay um, is enabled. So that's awesome and we can go ahead and remove our cube now because if we hit play you will notice that that is indeed gone as well. We cannot clip through that and this is a very very common trick used in pretty much any first person shooter these days. Uh, some also do a bit of animation when you get close to the wall but they normally use this technique on top of that as well. So the last thing is just adjusting the FOV on the camera. If you don't know what FOV is it's basically field of view so the higher this number get the more we're going to be able to see from our surroundings and the smaller it gets the more zoomed in it's going to be. In order to adjust this we simply need a reference to the camera here so we simply go in here create a public camera now because we'll be adjusting the camera directly and we'll just call this something like main camera and all we need to do is go down here and when we're scoped in we want to set main camera dot field of view and setting it to some smaller number say 15 or you could go up here and create a variable for that which we are going to do so we'll create a public float called something like scoped fov and we'll set that to 15 up here and we'll also create a private float which is going to store the previous 
field of view that we had so that we can return back to the normal field of view. So we'll call this either previous field of view or normal FOV. And we're just going to not default that to anything. Then down here, we want to set normal FOV equal to main camera dot field of view. And then we want to set main camera dot field of view to scoped FOV. And then when we unscope, we simply set main camera dot field of view back to normal FOV. So that should basically be everything we needed to do. Oh, actually, of course, we need to drag in our camera here. So drag in the main camera. And now we can maximize the game, hit play, and you should see all of these neat elements working together. We have animation, we have zooming in, we have a nice GUI overlay. And what you can do, of course, is adjust the field of view depending on and how much you want this to zoom in. And you can also adjust the speed of your controller and how fast you are able to look around to uh, give an impression that the um, character is actually scoped in and might have difficulty moving and such. And you can also add breathing effects. All of that is uh, up uh, to you to play around with. I just wanted to show you how to create this basic scope effect and we can enjoy the look of these awesome weapons. Remember, if you want to get them, you can just go to devassets.com and if you choose to support, that's freaking awesome. Um, the uh, site is powered only by you guys' support. So that's pretty much it. If you're making a first person shooter, I really suggest you check out this video on making a multiplayer FPS in Unity. It's a whole series and there's a lot of good stuff in there, so I suggest you browse around. Also, if you want to support these videos along with the different development projects such as DevAssets, you can always become a patron at patreon.com slash brackies. Patreon helps you to donate a monthly amount of your choosing and you can cancel it at any time, so it's really, really awesome. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in December, and a special thanks to Sultan Al Sharif, Derek Hemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Calhoun, Robert Barnum, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com/brackies.